What's up guys, Sam here. Welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how I made this glitchy koi fish design. As usual, we're gonna be making this inside of Photoshop using assets from Envato Elements. Since the band name is Killer Koi, the only design brief I had was to include a koi fish in the artwork. Should be simple enough. If you find the tutorial helpful, please remember to subscribe to the channel and like the video, it really helps out. Let's hop into Photoshop. Here we are once again inside of Photoshop. I'm using the same canvas size I normally use, which is 15 by 18 inches at 300 DPI. I'm gonna start by removing the background from this koi fish photo I found on Envato Elements by rasterizing the layer by right clicking and going to rasterize layer. And then quick actions should open up the option to remove the background automatically, making things a lot easier. As you can see, it's done a very good job apart from that little black dot on the bottom fin. So if we select a white brush and make sure that the layer mask is selected in the layers panel, we can then add that back in and then the koi fish is cut out perfectly. Next up, we're gonna bring in our other assets from Envato Elements and just basically work on positioning everything and getting everything in the perfect place. All of the assets I'm now bringing in are actually 3D objects from Envato Elements. So I was able to turn them to the right angle I wanted that would fit my artwork and then download them and bring them into Photoshop. If you don't have access to Envato Elements, then this will work just as well with images. It's just handy to have 3D objects that you can actually download at the perfect angle rather than searching through loads of photos trying to get that perfect one. If you're interested in trying out Envato Elements, then I do have an affiliate link and I'll leave it in the description below. Just going to rename every layer so we don't get confused and also drag in some guidelines which is something I really love to do to make sure my artwork is completely central. Next we're going to start to add some effects to the images. So first of all I'm going to add a threshold to the water which is in the background and I'm just going to play about with that until something looks good to me. Next I'm going to make a duplicate of the koi fish because I want to convert one to a smart object but I also want to keep an original copy just in case we mess anything up. So right click and convert to smart object and then we're going to go up to filter and filter gallery. The reason we need that layer to be a smart object is so when we apply these effects we do it non-destructively so they can always be edited at any point and they don't actually apply directly to the image. The effects we're going to apply in filter gallery are a stamp effect and a grain effect. Every image will react differently to the effects so you'll have to tweak the settings for each individual one. So the main effects are applied to the images now. I decided to add a black stroke around the lilies though, just to help them stand out a little bit from the skulls. I felt like the leaves were getting a little bit lost. Next, I'm gonna put all the layers we're using into their own group, leaving the background and any duplicate layers. And then I'm gonna have a final move about of any assets before we apply a gradient map. To make sure our gradient map only affects the group, we need to make sure we apply a clipping mask by holding Alt and clicking in between the two layers. Before I started this design, I knew I wanted to go for a purpley slash hot pink color. I didn't really start with a color palette, I decided to eyeball it, and then later on I do actually change the overall color for a more hot pink. Something I forgot to mention earlier was that I actually decided to leave the background water out of the group so it wouldn't be affected by the gradient map. And this was so I could apply a color overlay to it and make it a slightly different shade so it would stand out a little bit better. Just to give the koi a little bit of pizzazz, I decided to add a starburst over the eye. Kind of looks like it could be shooting lasers from its eyes, I guess. Kind of fitting as the band is called Killer Koi. I also go up to filter and add some noise to it just to help it blend in a little bit better with the rest of the design which is already quite grainy. Mm -hmm. 
I'm now making my final adjustments to the gradient map before we make the glitch effect. We're going to need a merged down layer of the design to do the glitch effect so we need to make sure that our colours and our layout are all on point before we move on. To make our merged copy layer we need to turn off the background and click Control, Shift, Alt and E together and this will give us a copy of every layer that's turned on in one layer. Next up we're going to apply a pattern overlay of some lines and I'm going to leave a download link in the description so you can download the same lines I'm using right here. Feel free to copy the settings I'm using here but every image reacts differently to this effect so best to experiment and just deal with whatever image you're working with at the time. So I like to break up this effect into four parts and in each part we're going to make a new duplicate layer and we're going to label each layer one, two, three and four so we can get back to a previous stage of the glitch effect at any point because this is considered a destructive effect. Meaning if we decide on something and then move on it's going to be very hard to undo it later if we change our mind. Once you're happy with your lines you're going to need to make a duplicate of the number one layer and then call it number two. Right click and convert to smart object which will merge the pattern overlay into the image. Then we need to turn off every layer except the number two layer. Right click the number two layer again and click rasterize layer. Next grab the rectangular marquee tool and we're going to make a selection where we're going to apply a wave effect. Now head up to filter, distort and wave. This part is really just trial and error but feel free to copy the settings I use but it is going to react very differently with different images like I said earlier. Because the image is rasterized for this effect to work we can't go back later on and change these waves so you're going to have to spend a bit of time getting them right before we move on to stage three. Now we will always have a duplicate of stage two so we can go back. However, if you do something good in stage three but then want to change the wave slightly, you're not going to be able to do that. So get the waves right now and then move on to stage three. The waves are looking really cool now, I'm really pleased with them. So now we can move on to stage three. So duplicate layer two, call it number three, and then head up to filter gallery. In filter gallery, we're gonna apply a horizontal grain effect. So select grain and then horizontal from the grain type drop down menu. From here guys, just experiment and see what looks cool. Feel free to copy what I'm using. Once you're happy with your horizontal grain effect, we're going to want to adjust the opacity of layer 3 so we can blend it nicely into layer 2. Turn the background layer off one more time and use the shortcut Control shift alt e again to make a copy of everything we've done so far. Call this layer 4. Now we're going to open up a levels adjustment layer so we can play around with the final contrast and brightness of the image. You may have noticed that the horizontal grain may have killed the vibrancy of your image so this will rectify that. The final part of this design is just to add in the band's logo and we're done. As always guys thank you so much for watching my videos I really appreciate the love and the support. I can't believe I'm almost at a thousand subscribers now so that's pretty crazy and I'm really pleased so again thank you. Remember to like the video if you found it useful and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Peace.